Ukraine girls really knock me out, leave the West behind. And Moscow girls make you sing and shout, and JoJo's always on my my, 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 my mind. So last week was Johnny Cash. I figure this week, kick it up a notch with the Beatles. As everyone seems to be asking, Daniel, is now the time to potentially be buying Russian stocks as they've gotten absolutely cremated? You see the 90% drops, 90% plus drops in a lot of them. And so I have a very straightforward answer for, for the folks that want to know. My short answer is no. Full stop. No. Now, of course, could stock prices go way higher, lower? Of course. But for me, short stop, no. Long term, the answer is more nuanced. And I'll discuss what would need to happen or in order for me to be open-minded about considering a purchase in Russian stocks. So that's let's let's dive into this video. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Daniel. You're watching Unrivaled Investing. This is a no-hype mission-focused channel trying to find you unrivaled songs, unrivaled stocks. And in full disclosure, this is not financial advice. And at the time of this video publication, I did not own any Russian stocks. So I understand the instinct. You see a stock that's down 90% plus, like many formerly large Russian companies, and you think, hey, bargain potential. This is what I like to see. I applaud this instinct. I believe generally this is the right sort of sniffing, you know, sniffing around to say, hey, is there potentially a deal here? I applaud that instinct. But for me, once again, it's a quick, quick and easy no for the following reasons. One, first from a moral compass perspective, it's easy to see why Russian stocks are an instant pass. What's going on in Ukraine is absolutely terrible. But there's other reasons as well why Russian stocks are an instant pass for me right now on my personal journey. Now, keep in mind, everyone has to figure out their own journey, but I'm sharing my own takes on the short term why I'm definitely saying no. Longer term, more nuanced, and I'll share that. So if you see most of the developed nations are throwing every financial sanction and penalty they can at Russia right now, and that's certainly what it looks like and feels like, it's for good reason. It would not take a huge leap of imagination to see them, let's say, seize assets in the future or to apply an onerous tax burden and say, hey, if you are a U.S. citizen buying these stocks, why not apply a 100% tax rate on Russian securities in the future? That type of thing to, to absolutely prevent people from buying these types of securities. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. Another key aspect is around respect. And if the Russian leadership isn't going to respect their own people, why would they want to take care of foreign shareholders? It's very clear that the Russian leadership has an agenda that's very different from the stability and enrichment and improvement of the average Russian person. And so that's a really key point to think about. You know, you may see countries where you don't agree with the leadership, but do you say longer term, do you think, are they actually working for the people? Are they working for stability, enrichment, education? Or are they cool with seeing bread lines and ATM runs? So that's, you know, when you see something like this and, you know, effectively leadership saying, plow ahead, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. That means they have a very different agenda than what's best for the people. That's something to keep in mind. Because I, I know a lot of people think, oh, you know, why not consider this country or that country? Here it is. This is a clear cut example of if they don't care about their own people, why will they care about foreign shareholders? Why will they care about you? And so that's my short term answer. Why it's very obvious to me, why not? Of course, could it jump higher or lower? Of course. But I don't, honestly, I don't care. It's just not part of my journey. The long term answer is more nuanced. What could change? my mind, you know, as I look at this. And I think long term, number one, I just need to see the existing leadership out, you know, not, you know, off in the distance, but gone, gone. And, you know, similarly, and perhaps I'm being a little too idealistic here, but I'd want, you know, a government that's a little more evolved and not looking to play bash my neighbor. You know, it's a government that's saying, hey, these oil reserves that we have that we're producing you know, maybe we should take these and constantly reinvest in productive things for the economy. Let's not play. Let's build up our, our nuclear arsenal. Let's build up our tanks and, you know, try to go reclaim a former empire. You know, that's that's so backwards looking versus an evolved like, wow, it would be amazing if we made this bet in science and we have open, 
you know, open debates and we learn things and, you know, let's, let's, let's take all this money and funnel it into education, you know, ed education. And so I, I look at something like this and I'm thinking, you say you want a revolution, well, you know, we just want to change the world. So anywho, that's my take on Russia. It's a hard no, full stop right now. Long term, you see the leadership out, then maybe I'd change my mind. Plus, maybe a revolution. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please make a point of hitting that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for tuning in.